International payments are key to the global economy, with bank clients requiring transactions to be conducted via a secure and efficient process that's delivered at the right price. Italy's pan-European Unicredit has been investing heavily to provide all its individual, corporate and banking clients with a better experience. The bank is replacing its payment platforms with a more common, more robust one that will allow higher straight-through processing, or STP, and meet the industry's evolving targets and standards. And we're joined now for more on this by Raphael Barasak, Global Head of Cash Management at Unicredit. Welcome to Cybos TV. Thanks for having me, also from beautiful Milan as my predecessor. Ah, <laughs> <Very nice. laughs> wonderful, we're very jealous. Now, <laughs> Raphael, to start with, can you tell us what digital acceleration means to Unicredit and what are the major benefits for your clients? Well, I would say that, uh, that uh, we have seen a, a tremendous growth in the way that our clients are using uh, the digital channels throughout uh, the various transaction banking services. And uh, obviously, when it goes to digitization, meaning in a way that there is no paper, um, the transaction is seamlessly being performed uh, automatically, always uh, straight through processing. And, um, and the fact that we have also incremented the usage of what you call market standards in terms of uh, digital signing. For example, we started to roll out our globally DocuSign, which is a market standard. And I think that our clients appreciate the fact that uh, that we are using uh, the standard and not necessarily what you call a proprietary banking solution. So in that respect, it uh, facilitates their usage uh, and adoption rate in a, in a quite an impressive pace, I would say. Absolutely. Uh, Raphael Piacere, uh, Unicredit is a front runner in the SWIFT GO initiative. What are the main benefits you see for you and your clients? Well, SWIFT, SWIFT and Unicredit is traditionally doing, uh, um, I would say, innovating payments. We were also front runners in GPI and, uh, and various services uh, around GPI in the Italian market and also in the European market. SWIFT Go is just another landmark that uh, together with SWIFT and with some other financial institutions, we are trying to address what we call the low value payment, uh, the more the retail small business payments that, uh, that uh, is not the main surf in turf of SWIFT. Um, in that respect, uh, we see as a, quite a, an important upside uh, in the way that, uh, as uh, also the, some of the predecessors have said, uh, in the future, international payment will be done also seamlessly online, cross border, in almost 24-7, uh, uh, without any, like the instant payment in the separate world today. So this is just another step in, in the many you know, innov innovative things that are happening now in the market, which eventually leads into real-time, I would say, um, payments in the international world um, across the globe. Mm. And Raphael, cross-border payments represent a huge and growing market, and a lot of fintechs have been making moves on that against traditional banks. So what can traditional banks do to retain their clients here? Well, first of all, fintechs, uh, in a way, have stimulated uh, the banking industry to get out of, uh, I would say, the comfort zone. Mm. And, to, and to start to understand that they need to work in a different pace and to offer a different type of services in order to be relevant for their clients. So in a way, it has been a stimulus to the industry and quite a welcome one because it required that, uh, I think, uh, if I compare 10 years ago and today where the industry is. Um, they are there and they are going to stay for a long time, so they are not going to work. And obviously... Their impact is mainly on, I would say, retail small business rather than the large corporates. So we have here also to distinguish about their impact in which type of industries. Talking about payments, there are today many options how to transfer money across the globe without any need of a bank, mainly for low value payments. And in that respect, uh, if a bank wants to be relevant to its client also in the future, it have to cooperate with the various third parties in order to be able to be let's say a couple of years ahead down the road, to be relevant and being cost, effect, cost efficient on one hand and provide the, seamlessly the same service that any type of fintech does. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would say that um, uh, looking in the future, it's, uh, it's, this it is part of the industry, I would say, uh, and for uh, banks, uh, especially big banks, to, be, to continue to be relevant, they would have to find the proper way how to circumvent their legacies and to provide a proper, I would say, high-value service in, a, in an efficient way to their clients. Mm, indeed. Now, um, speaking of fintechs, does Unicredit partner with fintechs? And uh, if so, what for? 
Obviously, I mean, uh, we are client centric. And I would say almost a decade ago, uh, clients brought to us thinkers to do the financing side in working capital. Okay, then the, we, have the, we, we are cooperating with, with them in all the transaction banking industry, in trade, working capital, and payments. Um, there are multiple examples. Um, through uh, piloting that uh, to have a special type of payment here in Italy two years ago with, with, uh, with uh, one fintech, for example, through you bus, uh, I would say, engines to connect to some of our payment flows. So uh, that's, that's part of the, of the industry today. Uh, and um, not, not seeing it in that way is somewhat a limitation factor for the organization. So we, we have to work with them and, and, and we welcome to work with them because uh, this is the only way how the industry is going to develop as well. Mm. And Raphael, let's talk about APIs. How can their standardization be achieved? Wow, that, that's, that's, a, that's a difficult one because, <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, no, because uh, in a way, um, without having a centralized regulator or a centralized body that is governed what would be the standard, I would say, let's say talk about SWIFT messaging, is a standard, is or is a standard. Um, API has no standard. So, for example, in Italy, we're using uh, the consortium bank, I mean, the central bank, I would say, a common, uh, to use, let's say, a common API for the local banking industry to do uh, an account check. Okay, and what about Germany? And what about France? And what about other countries? So, um, this... Uh, um, this is, um, unfortunately, now it is limited to, I would say, local, regional, uh, I would say, um, corporations, but it is not sustainable to go like that uh, going to the future. So, for example, SWIFT, uh, we expect SWIFT, for example, to be somehow uh, um, integrator of uh, the APIs concerning the international payments and trade in the messaging. For example, the pre-validation of SWIFT. Uh, we hope to become somewhat of a standard because then the other banks using the same API would be able to benefit from that. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, um, the cost to serve would be too high and it would be a fragmented uh, environment uh, down the road a couple of years from now. Mm. Rafael Barasak, thank you so much for joining us also from beautiful Milan.